Hello my friend, it's Pat Sloan here for my Monday night version of my daily video called Fireside Chat and we are going to kick it off with some stomping elephants. <laughs> diddy, diddy, diddy. Let's have some elephant talk. The, you have been doing incredible Ellie elephants over there. Ed and Ellie, I think. <laughs> It's like, they are just so cute. Uh, many of you have done multiples of them by this point, which is fabulous, absolutely fabulous, that you are already already there, already on the way to having so many done. <laughs> I have a bunch done too. So I'm going to show you uh, today one of the yellow elephants and then her partner, Ed, <laughs> with the blue elephant. So you can see that the ear and the body are switched you know because that's how I'm making them and they all have the striped tusks a couple of you have done some amazing dark backgrounds and the white tusks which are just they're just really spectacular they look really great um, I think I saw one with a lot of gray elephants which were also awesome must have been a hope must have been the boys club <laughs> So I want to just tell you a little thing about the elephants. They're really, it's really a simple block. Uh, Wendy designed, Wendy Shepherd of Ivory Spring designed this for my uh, fabric sew along. And so we, I thought it was so darn cute that we had to sew it along together. So on the, on the elephant, last week I talked to you about the ears. Uh, last Monday and you know I'll link you to that below to that video but last Monday's video and what happened is I think some of you have just sort of you had a little brain freeze because there was a group of you who instead of making the elephants with the white at the top you know and then you need the body color at the bottom like this right because see here the body the ear doesn't float in outer space and then stick to the head. So a few people got very excited and made the bottom parts the same as the background so that the ear was like floating. There was like white here. Um, so if you've cut the exact number, you will run out if you do that. So it's just, it's not that the pattern is hard. A few people are like, oh, I don't want to make that mistake. Well, you probably won't. Only a couple people did. Uh, and one lady, of course, did it on a whole bunch. So that's what got a lot of attention. <laughs> Poor thing. Uh, but you just have to, you know, do all the backgrounds and then put them aside. You know, then go ahead and do the bottom, which is matching the body. The other little tip is that this length of this block, this, this uh, unit, the big body unit, is not square. So it has one side longer than the other. So when you put it down, sometimes people will rotate it by accident or they might stick this uh, to create his little hump, you know, rump, <laughs> the little rump, you know, his rear end, it goes down like here. Uh, but if this goes on one of the other corners, it's not going to come out right. So be sure that you've laid these two next to each other before you put these on, this background piece on. So you know that you're putting it in the right spot. You know, just lay them out on your design board like this and then you go, okay, and then just put the square here and then that's where it goes. But it's easy to get them rotated when you pick them up and go to the machine. That's another problem. So just be sure that you are very consistent. Uh, you might, because there's not that many elephants, you might cut all of the pieces and then just go ahead and sew these on like as a chain, chain sewing because you've got them all layered. You've got the little square there and just go zoom, 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 and then that's done. And you won't, you know, you won't accidentally then rotate, rotate them. But that's a double check, double, 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 triple check so that you get that one right. So cute. Dee, 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 dee. <laughs> I don't know. I just love them. I, ah, and I'm still deciding. I was even just up before I filmed this up looking at my bedroom thinking, ah, I really, really should do them as a rectangle quilt to hang above my bed. Even though I love them the way they are uh, as a vertical, um, I really like to hang them in my bedroom. So I'm going to go measure that and see how many have to go across because I'm thinking that I may have to do just three rows, but they're longer. 
like taking the ones from down here and making them two or three out so that it's long enough to go across the headboard of the double bed so it can just hang right up there and then I will probably I've never done this I haven't had anything hanging up there for a long time um, I don't know why we took something down and then you know life happened and just nothing ever went back up so I but at the time I didn't I had like I think pictures or something so I will have to get a curtain rod I'll get a curtain rod so that I can do the hanging sleeve and hang it up there really nice just like I have here in my studio for the crush that is hanging up there on a curtain rod says so that curtain rod is a little too long for the actual quilt that's there but that's what we owned <laughs> so I put I just used it um, that's how I hang them that's why they have the hanging sleeve so that I just put it on there just like a curtain and it's just a sleeve and you uh, hang your quilt okay oh if you missed it last Monday yes I have the elephant scarf back where's my mic I don't want to hit the mic I think I already did um, so oh it's there we go get that where it should be so the elephant scarf oh so cute I'm actually thinking, should I get a pink one? It comes in pink and it came in brown. I think the brown, I like brown. Uh, you know, I don't know. I wear some brown clothing and I always feel like I look good in it. I feel good when I wear the brown, the, the, the sort of chocolate color, color brown. And there's a chocolate color brown one of these. So I don't know. I'm thinking I have to get another, another one. These were really well made. They're really nicely made scarves. I have a lot of scarves and it's hard when you're ordering it and you don't see it in person to know, will it be too thin? You know, but these are, these are nice scarves. So yes, that is on my list of things to do. I also have been keeping all my elephants. Hold on, let me just move this one back here a second. Oh yeah, you can hear that. Oh, it's gonna fall over. Okay, boom. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so I've been keeping them in the container and I have it marked for the elephants. So these have been working out super nice. Uh, I will link you to them. They're um, a sticker with a wash off chalk like marker so that you can write what's in there and then when that project's done you can take that out let I me mean, take that off and just wipe it off and put the next thing in there perfect i love these containers they work so well so i had two finishes guess which one of them is? one of them is you probably guess both of them if you think hard enough so <laughs> so i have Da, 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 da. the map let me just stand up a minute okay so we've got the map Ta -da! it's all quilted with the serpentine and I went with the yellow binding from my Morrison Park and the backing is the charcoal floral from my Bonnie Lane so I do have to stitch down the sleeve and then find out where my niece is right now because the particular park she works in is on um, they do a closure for a few months uh, in the winter and so she goes around to see friends and do other things so I had to find out where she's going to actually be on her birthday so I can mail it there because I don't know where she is right now <laughs> so, um, so I'm pretty excited now I forgot to show you on my computer I mean on my sewing machine on my Solaris the serpentine stitch this stitch can you see it there yeah that's the serpentine I forgot to show you what it looks like so I've got three pictures so I'm gonna pop them up here now this is what I use and then I'll show you one where it's uh, longer. So longer is also nice because if you're using a little bit thicker batting, you don't want it to be jamming up, um, you know, as it's going along like this. And, the, and I use the walking foot. You always use the walking foot when you have multiple layers, you know, front, back, and batting. Most machines will bunch up if you don't use your walking foot. So I mean, you can try yours without the walking foot, but it really works best with it. Okay, then the third picture I have here is where I've tightened it up. Now that's kind of tight. You want to try it. First of all, it's going to take you longer to sew it because it's going like this versus like this. It's not moving. It's not making any distance when it's shorter. It's going back and forth quite a bit. I think more like a, a zigzag, but the edges are curved, you know, so 
Uh, but it's pretty, and if you have a small piece uh, where you really want that sort of dense, denser serpentine or wave stitch, you might try that on a small piece and just see how it looks. It could be pretty cool. Okay, the mic actually fell off. Hold on. So, once again, there it is because you won't see it again. It'll be gone. I'm going to put it up on my gallery though. Uh, there is a link if you want one of these uh, state park maps. They're still out there. You can still get them. The state park fabric has been around a little while, so I suppose that it's not going to be around forever. So the link I send you to will be to all of the state the, the state parks. So if um, if you see something else, you might want to get it before it's gone because they do they do rotate out pretty quickly those specialty fabrics, and then you know something something new comes in. They did the little pictures in bigger um, panels too like I know they're about that big so they're pretty cool they could be nice I have a great big state park one and I'm going to use one of those small ones as the back so you know, part of the back because it's you know I like in the middle of it or something like that we'll see not sure I may do something else <laughs> okay what else I had another finish the cross stitch yes 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 it is tiny and it's mighty mighty tiny <laughs> so I put a little bow at the top I used the hoop that I had it had the paper got stuck on that one so I have to look at that side that one's got paper stuck on it darn so I've I thought it got it all off but I missed a piece so here it is I have it in here and I have uh a few photos, just a photo here, show you the back, how I, I did the, I did not look up how to do the back. This is just for fun. I am not doing this as an heirloom piece. I'm going to stick it up on the wall for a while and then I'll switch it out to something else. Um, you know, I'm not concerned with it lasting a hundred years, <laughs> like the sampler I have from my great, great grandmother. So what I did is I just folded the back and here's a picture sort of the process but I just folded it and then took running stitches with some of the leftover pieces of thread just to pull it in so that it would be flat back here you know it wouldn't be pushing forward you know so I just trimmed around it and did that I'm sure people put batting behind this and other things that are really lovely but I was just doing something very simple just to put it up on the wall so it's going to go here in the studio of course and <laughs> And I'll have it up on the wall. Here is here it is on the picture of the project on light blue, which I also think is really lovely. I like that light blue, but when I started this, I didn't have any light blue, so um, I did. I did see I switched out the house is white on here, which I think is really nice. It's crisp. It's very spring-like, and mine's more uh, cozy colors. I've got the red and the green, with then the pink, the darker pink. So you can just see the difference in them. I am happy to have that done that I have not completed true confessions I've not completed a lot of cross stitch so uh, having one done is like you know that's a good thing now when I've been sewing I realized that I've been using something just recently because it came just recently that I have really loved because I have a few of the rings for and, and the squares to put the bobbins in and they're they're bigger um, can I get this out I'm sitting here next to the desk with it oh yeah I can so here's the squares the square with that you can put all the bobbins in and then there's also the donut rings there we go I don't have any in there right now but the donut rings. so these like this holds a lot of bobbins it is super awesome but I've also used these for years and years but recently I got I got this one this little boat it's called the bobbin boat and it just has a small number and I found this fabulous because I it doesn't take up as much room do you see the difference see it's a lot less room and so to keep it out like these are kept down in the cabinet in the drawer and I just didn't want that big square up here because I don't need I don't need all those colors up here right now so I started using this and it is perfect the bobbin boat has been working Perfect. I love it. So that is my new fun 
thing. If you have not had a, gotten a bobbin boat yet, their links are below, so you might you might uh, want to get that. Also, I have a link. The first comment is a link to my website, if it holds. I've been trying to put the comment there, but sometimes it disappears. I don't know why. But there's a web post today, an article uh, to go with this video, so you will find it over there as well. As well, as well. <laughs> oh, give me a rolling assistant over here. Now, a couple of you asked me if I would show you the Liberty of London pin cushion again. And of course, they have the cute mice. <laughs> mice, mice, mice. They're so darling. That's, I should have got a mouse. I think I'm going to have to order a mouse. So here is, it comes in, you know, comes in acrylic, just like in there. But it is a pin cushion made with the cotton, Liberty of London cotton, and it has a little felt. Um, well, the felt stem and the felt leaf, but it is so darn cute in the Liberty fabric. <sighs> they have apples, so if you like apples more than pears, and then they have some scissor um, holders, you know, to put your scissors in, and I think a couple of other things that are all, all pre-made, and they're very reasonable. This is like 13 I mean, twelve fifty, something like that. So super, super reasonable. I love it. I love it. So I'm gonna have to get. I'm gonna have to get a mouse. So I was like, when I ordered it, I thought, oh, do I need a mouse? Do I need a mouse? I'm like, now I need a mouse. <laughs> so then I gotta order it again. That's, oh well. So we have some things coming up. Um, I have one with the hearts that is not on our. Whoops. Oh, poop. The hearts is not on the calendar. So here we got the calendar and I, uh, I've been writing on it, what's going on, but the hearts were going to start, what did I say? The 22nd, I think the 22nd. So this is the picture of the hearts. Uh, I think it's the 22nd. So you have to write it on there. And we'll do them up until uh, February 14th. So they're similar to working on the trees where uh, there's a small one and a little bit bigger one. They're, not, they're a little bit smaller. Both of them are a little smaller than the trees were. But I'm going to make the small one first in my um, Morrison Park pinks and reds. So this is what I'm going to do first. I'm going to go through and make it in, in with these. And that will be super cute. And then I will decide to make the bigger one in something else. I'm still waiting to see if it's called Sanctuary, the Sanctuary fabric, if it comes in after I make, after I make these, or I'm going to pick something else to make, make it with. I also started tracking because I've been, I've wondered for years and years and years, I'm sure somewhere on the internet it tells me this, like how many days of sun do I get in where I live, right here in my town? Is it sunny every day? Is it sunny 10 out of 30 days? You know, I always feel like January is the most dreary as I'm taping this. It's a beautiful sunny day. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so I decided I'm going to track it on my calendar. If there's sunshine, I walk. Sometimes I walk if there's not sunshine. And then I do my yoga every day because we're doing yoga with Adrian, which is Breathe, is her uh, theme for the month. And they have been Fabulous. I have loved every single day. Um, I'm so excited. I'm going to order a t-shirt or a sweatshirt with the breathe on it. Uh, yeah. I'm a groupie. There I go. Yoga groupie. Uh, the, <laughs> the other thing that started happening, I noticed, like this is weird, I know, but my bananas, on the bananas, the Chiquita bananas, were coming with all of these fun stickers. Like you can tell that's like, you know, a famous artist, a, you know, like a riff on a famous artist or a tribute to a famous artist. So finally, I went to the Chiquita Banana website where I found the link that tells me what's going on. So you can link below. They did 12 of these and you can print off. <laughs> I printed it off. You can print off. There's two sheets that actually fold up into this little house that makes it like a little museum exhibit. So, you know, some of them can go here in the Oh, I guess you cut those out. You cut those or windows out. Uh, but you put you put the Chiquita Bananas on there. And this one is probably on the other side. But there's Mona Lisa, the birth of Venice. Of, yeah, 
there's just all these really, really fun things. This one is Marilyn Monroe right there. That's Marilyn. Uh, so I need to put this other one that I put on my calendar because I didn't get that one more than once yet. So I'm going to put it on there just because I'm a dork. I just thought it was fun. <laughs> I was like, oh, these are fun labels. And I guess over the years they've done that. But I like that they're artists, that they're famous paintings. Uh, and it's kind of kind of cool to see. You can see them all at the link below to the website. If you have kids that eat bananas, you could send them the link so they could print off the sheet and put the stickers on it and make the little museum room and set it up. Hey, <laughs> call it a art project or call it a uh, science project, a woodwork, woodshop project, something. They have to build the little building. <laughs> they can do it. It'll be fun. Okay. What else we got going on? Ah, my new book, if you didn't see about that, will be out. Uh, I'm going to say end of May, maybe beginning of June, but if it's earlier, yes. So it's all about the holidays and you get to see the quilts on the cover. You can pre-order it so that when it comes in, it'll come right to you. Uh, I am, you know, it's so exciting. Somebody did ask me, when did I start the, when did I finish sending the quilts in? And I got mixed up. Uh, and I'm, you know, I plead the fifth. I mean, it's like the year 2020 was so messed up for me like time timing wise so i did send all of my quilts in the early spring i think it was maybe like end of march uh to my publisher so that's of 2020 like the end of march and i was delayed sending it so i was supposed to send it in 2019 but um we had uh, the death of my mother-in-law and a lot of uh, things that had to happen there that took time and and then I got out of whack on getting it done. So we extended it. Uh, so anyways, it will be out. It takes about a year from when all the quilts are done. So it's a little bit longer than a year. But it will. it's going to be so much fun. We will sew from the book. Yes. And the projects are not hard. They're really fun. They're all holidays. Uh, and I just love decorating for the holidays. You know, I'm just goofy about them. So we will have a really fun time and you can pre-order now and then it'll come in all right i have i have a question i thought i would answer um so we'll do two two q a questions fun they're, they're inter interesting ones fun ones good ones so randy asked uh so i have several baby lock sewing machines uh you see the solaris here this is the tiara that sits back there. There's the jubilant over there. I also have the Sashiko machine, which is not in the room here. And I have a uh, prior machine called the Destiny that I was using prior to the Solaris, um, which I'm not using right now because I don't have a place to set it up right now. Uh, so it's in the other room. But Randy's question was, um, am I doing my quilting of my quilts, you know, like, like, you know anything like free you know quilting of the quilts putting the layers together am i doing that on the solaris or am i doing it on the tiara over here so that's a good question because first if you're not familiar with the tiara uh, <clears throat> it is what i call a sit down long arm so it is the same machine that you would find on the big frames that you would drive along like this with handles and everything. It is the same machine, but they've set it into a table, which means you use it entirely differently. When it's in the table, you push fabric underneath it, just like you do on your regular machine, but it has no feed dogs. You can't do patchwork. You can't do any specialty stitches. You can't do embroidery. It doesn't do anything but free motion quilt. It's a single person purpose machine. Uh, these types of machines have been out quite a few years. Uh, there are many manufacturers have them. Um, they are very compact, you know, so they're a small table. So for, for people who, there is at one point where machines, your sewing machine, which has your feed dogs and you can do patchwork and, and, and applique stitches and all that. It used to be that the throat on here, which is that space in between, they, they never were real big. They got to be 
you know, like 12 inches or something, whatever they got to be at one point, but they were never super big, but they are much bigger now. Like you have the jazz is a really good size throat and, and it does more, you know, does have feed dogs and Solaris has a good size throat. Um, but prior to that, you didn't have that option. So people would buy a single purpose machine like the Tira, which is similar like they would buy a long arm, except that maybe they didn't have space for a long arm or they weren't very good at standing and pushing, but they were really good at sitting and shoving the fabric underneath like they did on the regular machine. Those t the Tierra uh, is really a fast machine. It's very powerful and that helps you with your stitch length and your consistency. They also over time have come up with other uh, ways to help you with stitch regulators that um, can be added onto them or I haven't looked at the newest one they, you know like the jazz has a newer newer versions than what I have and I, I'm not sure what all the fun features are that they have anymore um, but down to the question is uh, I have recently anything that's bigger I send out to the spa and the going to the spa means it's going to a long arm quilter uh, so I have um, a couple people who I work with. You hear me talk about Cindy and Dennis a lot. They, I send them a lot of my things. And so if it goes, so I've been sending the bigger things out because I don't want to, I don't want to have to deal with it. Uh, I want to work on other things rather than that. I don't want to work on that. So I have been quilting more on my Solaris. I have not been firing up the Tierra lately uh, to do anything. I'm also finding since I broke my wrists, I'm having more trouble with my left hand still. My left hand still is not uh, where it should be. And I have trouble uh, trying to grasp the quilt in my left hand to maneuver it. That starts to make my wrist hurt. Uh, so I can't do that for very long. And I certainly don't want the bulk of a big quilt to have to deal with. So I'm in a space right now where I am using the Solaris as my main machine for everything, for all this stuff. Um, and that's fine. You know, I'll probably get back to the, to the Tierra again, uh, down the road when I can build the strength up in my wrist again. I want to do some of the little bit bigger quilts and I want to do them a little faster with the free motion because that one runs much faster so that I can actually quilt quicker with that than I can with the domestic. These are called like domestic machines, your regular sewing machines. Okay. One more quick question. Anna asked me, as well, it should be quick. I'm going to give you a short answer. How did I get into quilting and how do I find time to have so many projects going on at once? <laughs> I'll answer the second part first, uh, Anna. I was like, it's my business. So I do run a lot of projects because that's what my job is. This, this is my business. It's not like you that it's your hobby and you kind of pick and choose and you do all different things. Um, you know, so I do this as my business and that's why I run a lot of things and I make the time because that's how my business has an income. You know, if I don't do things, there isn't any income. Uh, so that's the, that's the short answer on that one. And then how do I get into quilting is, is a, there's a, I have several write-ups about that, several interviews I've done. Um, and you know, pretty much, uh, I learned to quilt. I taught myself to make a quilt because I sewed clothing. So I just made a, a quilt years and years ago for our bed as a bedspread. And then I never made another one uh, for many years. Then a friend of mine, Gwen, in my office quilted. And Gwen said, you really like to learn, you know, you would really like quilting. She goes, I think you should learn to quilt. And so basically Gwen signed me up for the class. She took me to the quilt shop and signed me up for the 12 week all by hand cardboard template learn to quilt class. And so, and she didn't take the class with me because she already knew how to quilt. So, uh, so that's how I entered quilting was via a class that my friend told me I must take. And I was really not certain about it at all because I'm like, I don't know if I want to cut up those little pieces and sew them back together again. <laughs> so ah, that's the, I'll, I'll link you over to my about page where if you're interested, you can read some interviews I've done, which give you a much more in depth, uh, little story about how I quilt and, uh, what my business is about. So thank you, my friends, for being here on this Monday night. It's always awesome to connect on Monday when more of you can do the live portion during the premiere. So for about 30 minutes before this starts, we're hanging out. If you would <clears throat> subscribe to the videos down below for me, click the like button. I love you. 
Mwah. I'll see you online.